Well, the US Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says the White House could shut down its embassy in Havana, Cuba after a suspected sonic attack was launched on its diplomats. At least 21 Americans associated with the embassy have experienced a range of unexplained health problems, including mild traumatic brain injury, permanent hearing loss and brain swelling. Investigators haven't yet identified the cause, but it's thought that targeted sonic waves from a secret weapon may be responsible. Fulton Armstrong is a former CIA official and US National Intelligence Officer for Latin America. He's currently a senior fellow in Latin studies at the American University in Washington, from where he joins me live now. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Firstly, uh, this all sounds like a plot from a spy novel, but it is very real. Can you just explain to us, uh, when did this all begin? Uh, it, it does sound like the plot of a rather, a rather mediocre spy novel uh, for which that we have no real explanations. The, the problems began last fall, uh, at a, ironically, at a time that both governments were pushing very hard uh, to move as many bilateral accords across the goal line uh, as possible prior to the U.S. elections in November. And there was time of great good feeling between both, both sides and lots of cooperation. And it's the incident started piecemeal, and then a pattern emerged over some time. And there have even been allegedly certain, they call them attacks. I'm not sure that these are really attacks, but there have even been some attacks as late as late August. And you're a former CIA official who served in Havana before America reopened its embassy there in 2015. Is there any indication who might be responsible? And, and what would be the motivation behind such an attack? That's part of the mystery within the mystery within the mystery, because usually when we try to analyze situations like this, we look at who the potential actors are and what their potential motives are. And there is no, there, it's, it's a mystery. It's even a mystery, frankly, to the Cuban government. The Cuban government, including Raul Castro personally, have put their, their imprint on collaboration with the United States to try to get to the bottom of what's been going on. So the who part is, is beyond explanation. Even the what part is beyond explanation because this technology, well, yes, there has been spy technology for eavesdropping using microwaves and sound waves and things like that uh, in the past. They're old technologies from the Cold War era. There's never been known a technology like this that could target somebody, as, as the Associated Press has reported in a series of brilliant reports, target somebody when they're sitting on a bed and then if they move one meter to the left, then suddenly they're not feeling these waves going on. There's no such knowledge uh, by either the United States government, apparently, or the U.S. intelligence community or the Cubans to what this is. So the who is unknown, the what is unknown, and the why is unknown because, because the, uh, the relationship has been going extremely well since Presidents Castro, Raul Castro, and Obama started the normalization process in December 2014. Uh, which then means that we good, good minds try to find good, good uh, explanations. But then we get into very speculative areas of who's doing this. And one of the speculations is that there's a rogue element of the Cuban intelligence service or the Cuban armed forces that has this technology that's unknown to the mainstream intelligence forces or, or military forces that's doing this to somehow subvert a Raul Castro policy, be it normalization with the United States or, or perhaps uh, his transition to power because he's announced he's retiring in February and they've officially announced the five month transition period has started. So would a rogue element want to do that? A rogue element that had been nurtured and developed and put in their positions by Raul himself turning on him? The, the logic's just not there. Another speculative thing is that it's a third country. Uh, right now, it's very much in vogue, at least in the United States, to blame Russia for a lot of things or to blame North Korea for a lot of things. And while, yes, bad guys have tried to do bad things in places like Cuba, where they think they're beyond uh, at least our eyesight, our, our ability to, to see what's going on in the past, these were very small things compared to attacking individual diplomats, including Canadian diplomats, 
which gives this story a very important different spin from the normal bilateral issue with the United States and Cuba. Uh, that's right. Uh, Canada and Cuba have uh, long held or uh, had warm relations uh, lasting many years, unlike the US. But uh, uh, Rex Tillerson says uh, closing the embassy is an option and he's under pressure from uh, some Republicans who never wanted to resume relations with Cuba in the first place. Do you think the mission should be shut down in light of what's happening? Absolutely not. I mean, this was a bipartisan policy. Barack Obama went slow on normalization and he went sure on normalization to make sure that there was bilateral support. In fact, some of the biggest proponents of normaliz normalization are the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and its Republican allies on Capitol Hill. Rex Tillerson's own department, the State Department, has publicly exonerated the Cubans from any role in this and has they have publicly stated that collaboration between our two governments in getting to the bottom of this issue has been extraordinary and constructive. So where he gets off saying that he's going to be doing a policy review as, as, as monumental as closing an embassy simply because five senators who opposed this all along and five senators who have no information that we don't have and have probably bad information that's from biased sources, um, it's a little bit strange, but perhaps your viewers are used to hearing strange foreign policy noises out of Washington, D.C. these days. Yes, so it certainly is a mystery that will hopefully be solved in due course. Uh, thank you again for your time tonight. My pleasure.